Which brings me into the rites of passage. I, I, I enjoyed reading that so much in your book. Um, could you talk about what you experienced when you became a young woman, I guess, getting her first menstrual cycle? What type of ceremony did you guys have? And then becoming a mother for the first time. Ooh, you don't ask small questions, do you? <laughs> I think that this is what is missing. I grew up here in America. Mm-hmm. And, you know, culturally, there's so much going on. Where are you from? Were you here? Where you did you come from this place, Africa here? Mm-hmm. Were you original Native American? It's so much, right? Mm-hmm. Um and I, I think that's important, but also rites of passage, those that those wisdom nuggets that were handed down orally that were lost. Uh, first of all, when I, I became a young lady, very, and I've lost you again. Can you see me? I could see you. I could see you. Um, I became a, a young lady very, um, very young. I think I was only nine. And it was my mother and my aunt. And it's very interesting. They take an egg. And they take one egg and they break it and they show you what the inside of the egg looks like. And then they have a boiled egg. And they will crack that open and they will kind of use that to help you understand that there's a great change that's taking place inside of you. You're also told that your womb is the most sacred place on earth. Yes. I love and reading that. Responsibility to hold it sacred. One of the things you're also told that energy does not die. They get that across to you. Energy does not die. And uh, they let you know that whatever energy you let in there will stay in there forever. So that if you want your children to be all that you want them to be, you need to be real careful that um, the energy that creates your children is that of the person who you want to be, um, their father, and that energy only. Do you understand that? Yes. Completely, yeah. And. Yeah. Um, so there, there was that, and then they made me eat, eat the egg, and, and then they washed my face. And they say, from now onwards, you will have to see the world through different eyes, which I didn't really understand. I was only nine. You will see the world through different eyes. And um, both my mother and my aunt, well, it was a very loving, very loving interaction. And even though I left it not quite understanding it all, as I grew older, Then I was able to, um, as I grew older, I was able to understand it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about motherhood? Your first child, your first birth? Oh, my goodness. My first child was a boy. And my mother was so excited. She was beyond words. She she was out of control. (laughs) By the time I left the hospital, the nurse says, you need to take your baby. And your mama, so that we can get work done here. She was so excited. But um, when she took me home, she said, well, the medical profession is just finished with you and I'm just about to begin, you know. And then they use um, a lot of herbs and so on and they put you in a warm bath and they get to massage you and anything that is left inside of there, get it out of there. And when I think about it, my first two children, I never had problems with maintaining weight because they make sure that every single clot, everything is is pushed out. They massage it out, massage it out, and then they they kind of wrap you. You wrap you tightly. But one of the things that my mother did that that I've done with with my own um, children, my first child was a boy, and she took him out of my arms and she said, this is a child that God has given to you and your husband, but he doesn't belong to you. 
He belongs to the woman who will love him as much as you do. And long after you're gone, will continue to love and take care of him. Mm -hmm. So that helped me to understand that when I get a daughter-in-law, I have to be excited. When my first got, when my first son got married here in America, all my friends said they'd never seen a mother that excited when a son gets married. Because those were the words that my mother gave to me. Mm -hmm. And um, they, when babies are born, the, the top of the head, the, there's an opening there and you can see it when they breathe. And over a period of time, it will close. So they blew on that spot and they said prayers on that spot that God will guide him and direct him, et cetera, et cetera. But the biggest thing about that was when she said to me, I'd never heard it up until then, she says, he doesn't belong to you. So enjoy him while you have him. But he really belongs to the woman who will hold his heart and will walk with him long after you go. That, yeah. that was I think that's beautiful. And you also mentioned uh, the cord is the direct link to the prayers for that's right. That's right. your child as a mother. That's right. That's yeah. Right. 